Those of you who watch this channel on a regular basis will know I have a tendency to order very odd things like this thing that I did in the past. It's a, basically it's a 12 watt street light and I thought this was quite a nice light. I thought it was quite an interesting product. And subsequently I was browsing and thinking let's see what's changed. Let's see what's new in street lights. And Banggood had previously been in touch. I was on Banggood's site where I got this and I was looking at the things they had and thinking, I'm sure Banggood got in touch with me and offered me products. So uh, I'd politely declined at the time and just put it in file because uh, I always feel that a bit self-conscious about when uh, people offer things because the last thing I want to do is be like many of the channels that you can see um, that they've accepted a product and they're trying to put a brave face on it and present it as well as they can. But in reality, from their mannerisms, you can tell that they think it sucks balls. So um, I didn't want to be in that situation. However, I was looking at the streetlights and I thought, you know what? They got in touch and they offered a product. I bet they don't get asked often for streetlights. So um, I contacted them and said, would you send me a streetlight? And they said, yes. And they said, send us a list of the type of streetlight you'd be interested in. And I did, and they sent the cheapest one. <laughs> but that's okay, because it's a light that I was con seriously considering, you know, actually taking a look at. I, I really thought this was interesting, because it's based... Uh, hold on, where is that? I've just put it, I've just put it down. What have, what have I done? There it is. So, uh, here's the original, and here's its big brother. Let's put them side by side. This one's rated 12 watts, this one is rated 24. So, um, it's noticeable that this one has the lenses, and it appears to be the 1 watt LEDs underneath, which will be revealed shortly. But um, it does, actually, if you point at a wall, it does create a sort of long beam of light sideways, and I suppose that's really what you need for lighting roads. So, um... Yes, uh, I think it's time to take it to bits, but it's worth noticing that I've already um, tested it for the earth connection, which is the usual first test, and sadly, it's not earthed. But that's just something we've come to expect. In fact, we kind of know what's in here, don't we? But let's uh, plug it in, earth or not, and see it lit. And this is where it just swamps out the camera randomly for no good reason at all. Oh, there it goes. Now it draws about 23 to 24 watts, depending on how it's feeling at the time. At the moment it's drawing 23. It's big. I've had it on just to actually measure the temperature and when it's cold it starts off at 24. It's warm now, it goes down to 23. So it's pretty close to its 24 watt rating. It's It's got that nice spread of light that is kind of long. Um, and sort of road shaped. I mean, that's fundamentally not that surprising given its intended application. But anyway, uh, let's open it up. Oh, it's also worth noting, it's got this system for mounting a pole at the end and it's exactly the same as the other one. It seems to measure for an uh, external diameter of about 45 millimeters, inch and three quarter. Also, temperature-wise, on the outside, uh, 20 degrees centigrade above ambient. Well, I left it on for a good length of time, and it didn't seem to get much above that, and that's very good. I can also see from the casting that uh, it's designed to take a different configuration. It's designed to take this sort of 50 watt, 100 watt type LEDs. I'm not sure what the max would be rated in for this heat sinking, but it is designed to take that. But in this case, it's using a, a panel very similar to the other one. So let's uh, unplug it and open it up. Another thing where they note, the other one was kind of sealed. This one, the flex, is just kind of loose in there. I'm guessing it's just going onto one of those little power supplies. Uh, the usual little drivers. So let's uh, find a screwdriver. Same arrangement again. That the, It's got these little aluminium extrusions that go into little recessed dimples and just hug the glass on the front onto a seal. It's quite a smart light. One of the reasons I... I went for this from Banggood, it's kind of like, it's very hard to supply me with a light I don't like, particularly if it's got, uh, if it ticks all the boxes of being a fairly industrial unit. Uh, it's industrial, it lights up, it's electronic -y, it's, uh, yeah, ticks all the boxes. Oop, okay, good generous seal. Typical power supply that we'd normally expect. I'm going to move that out of the way because all it's doing at the moment is lighting. Uh, I'll put that 
that seal over there as well. So let's see, what's the power supply? Where's the earth wire? The earth wire is floating. They could have put onto one of these screws. They could have, uh, actually those, uh, are those tapped? Hold on, let's uh, put that to the test, shall we? Can I find a screw here? I'm not sure if they'll be M3 or not. Actually, you know, looking at that, I reckon that the lugs for mounting this, it's hot melt glued in. Oh, it's siliconed in, actually. Um, I reckon the lugs would have actually fitted in that, but I'm guessing they may have used the silicon for heat dissipation as well. So let's, uh, just out of interest, it's that tapped. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It's certainly not M3, so that rules that idea out. I'm not sure what size that is. I'm not 100% sure if that's tapped or not. It looks fairly clean, but uh, I'm not sure if it is tapped or for M3 or M3.5 uh, or M4 or something like that. The power supply, 18 to 24 watts. Ah, interesting. Uh, DC output, 57 to 90 volt uh, at 300 milliamp. So that must be running all these LEDs in series. It's a universal supply, 100 to 265 volt, 50, 60 hertz. Right. Okay. So the lenses feel loose. This is this, I'm going to end up with lenses everywhere, aren't I? This is just going to happen. I don't know if this is all one solid assembly or it's just a cover for the lenses first. Is this metal? Actually, it feels quite thick. It feels like a sort of plastic. It might be a sort of actual mirror material. I wonder how efficient the lenses are at spreading the light, uh, but not actually diminishing its output too much. Stainless steel screws, which is good, uh, because they're not sticking to the screwdriver, which is annoying. Oh, th this is about to scatter lenses everywhere. I think I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm not 100% sure how this is put together. Oh, this, this one's covered in heat sink compound. There. Oh, right, okay. That's that screwed then. Righty-o. So, um, ah, and I get heat sink compound all over my fingers. Righty-o, let's wipe that off before I get it all over this. Ah, that's a very sticky, gooey screw. Okay. Right, uh, one more. I'm just going to wipe my hands before I get it, this heat sink compound everywhere. Oh, that's better. Righty-ho. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Right, so uh, now the lenses are off, I can see that, first of all, this is a basically plastic mirror. Um, I think that, I don't think it's 100% needed. It's got a protective film in it as well that's not been removed. Uh, which side is that? That's the uh, back, and this is the sort of f side you'd look at through the front. But I think it was mounted the other way. I think it was just a cosmetic thing, really. It's odd that they used plastic. I thought they might have used punched metal or something. So let's take a look at the circuit board here. It is using all just standard 1 watt LEDs like the other one did, uh, with oodles of heat sink compounds, as you can see from here, just squished underneath the back. I feel I might have to take that off just to see how much heat sink compound is involved and just how squishy it is, what sort of coverage they've got. The heat did seem to be concentrated relatively in the middle. Oh, these are very gooey. Yeah, there's heat sink compound everywhere under this, which is good. There. Yeah. I like the fact they're using conventional 1 watt LEDs in this big series string because they're not using series parallel arrays. Oh, this is going to be so messy, isn't it? Oh, is this even going to lift? I'm going to not push it too far because I don't want to damage anything. Owing to the fact, well, you know, I love lights. Oh. Oh, it's making swamp, swamp monster noises. Ugh. Right, what we got? What we got? 
We've got oodles of heatsink compound under an aluminium core PCB. Okay, that's kind of acceptable. That's good. They've not skimped on the thermal transfer compound. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, this is uh, just a wee bit messy. The factory must be an absolute delight to work in when they make these. It must be just oozing with heat sink compound. So I'm going to screw this down and then I'm going to trace these, uh, the format of these LEDs out. I guess they just zigzag up and down. Oh, actually, no, because I'm seeing the little sort of uh, indentation that you get in these packages. Uh, all seem to be pointing the one direction. Let's uh, screw this down first to make it sure it doesn't drop out and completely cream the place with a uh, heat sink compound. Good clearance around the screws, which is good. Oh, that makes very squishy heat sinky noises. Right here. So there's the negative, and the track is going up. Skirting around the holes, it's starting at this the end of this LED and then it's working down through them, skirting around the holes again. Good big! It's basically using large areas of track to help couple the heat onto the aluminium through the thin layer of fiberglass. So that comes down, skirts around that hole again, and uh, then it goes right back up to the top again, and then straight down. Yeah, it's it's actually that all the LEDs are facing the one direction. Um and uh, it's basically the supplies going up, running down the middle, going up, running down uh, through the LEDs, and it's doing that all the way to the end, where it finally gets to here, and it's giving good clearance around these screws, which is good, and then it just comes along to positive. So pretty predictable and acceptable, I'd say. Yeah, this is this is nice. I would say that, wouldn't I? I mean, it's very hard to make me not like a light. I like the fact that it's not trying to be over ambitious the ratings. I like the fact it's running all the LEDs in the series. I like the fact that if it came to the crunch, you could change the LEDs probably. Although that's not necessarily what MD really... If you were like putting street lighting in for, for a living, you wouldn't want... You'd want reliability more than anything else. You wouldn't want to be going having to do maintenance in these because really you'd just change complete fittings uh, when it came to came to that. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good, I have to say. Yeah. I wonder what the beam angle's like. Uh, with the... I'm, I'm going to plug this back in again. I'm going to see what the beam angle's like without the lenses on. It has to be done. So plug it in again, unearthed. I would connect the earth. In fact, Here's the thing that it's not got a seal around there. I'm not sure how I'd seal around that. I'd almost, if I was putting this in commercially, I'd want to bring a new flex in. Um, and it would have been nice to have some sort of gland in there. Um, I'm not sure that goes really. And then actually terminate it in here with proper earth onto the, the chassis, the body of it. But yeah, let's see. If this was actually angled up the way slightly at the side, yeah, you would really want water in there anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure how. I don't think water would get in there, but yeah. If it was angled up at a slight angle like many of them would be, and not just straight horizontal, that should theoretically not really allow water up there in the first place. So maybe that's not really an issue. It's nice that it can breathe through that hole as well, because then you've not got that thermal expansion and contraction. I'm just going to turn this on dazzle you all. Oh yes, warm white by the way, I asked for warm white. Let's uh... Oh that makes a huge difference actually, it really widens the beam, it really is just a round splash of light. So those lenses do make a significant difference. Um, I'm going to do a light test, I'll do, uh, I'll put it together, but I, I'm going to do a test with and without lenses and just measure at a central point and see how bright it is, uh, how the brightness compares. Now, I'll leave a note of that down in the comments, but you know what? Uh, so far, uh, kind of liking this. Yeah, it's quite, a, it's quite a nice light. It's nice and functional. Uh, this seal um, also looks uh, generous. It doesn't look skimpy, and it, it's not one of those horrible seals that just sort of scrunches and squishes up. It is actually a solid seal that that fits in here. I have to say, if I was putting the brackets on, I. Th I think, uh, because this is loose glass, if I was actually doing anything up top, 
uh, at the top of a lamp post, I think I'd want to actually wrap a bit of tape around this before even attempting to put these brackets on just in case, you know, you fumbled and dropped the glass out. But then, is that going to happen? Okay, it's, it's interesting. I do like it. I like the, also the option that you can then kind of remove the lenses if you want a much wider beam angle. Yeah, that's, that's quite a neat light.